The second theorem is the intermediate value theorem. Now, the intermediate value theorem is a way for us to determine whether or not a function will equal a particular value on a closed interval. So once again, our condition states that we need the function to be continuous on the open interval, excuse me, on the closed interval, just like for the extreme value theorem. There's a second condition as well, is that f of a cannot be equal to f of b. Okay. K happens to be some number between f of a and f of b. So let's kind of create this picture here. So I'm going to make a graph. Okay. So here's a over here. Here's b over there. Okay. Now what we know is that um, the function has to be continuous. So I'm going to have a continuous function. I'm going to draw in a second. But I also know that the starting value of the function on the interval has to be different than the ending value. So I'm going to start the function up here. I'm going to end the function down there. I know the function is continuous in between, so it's just going to be concave up, just like that, and decreasing. Okay. So that means that right here at this spot, that is my y value. That's my f of a. And down here, that's my f of b. All right. So k is somewhere in between f of a and f of b. k is somewhere on that section of the y-axis. I don't know. Let's make it right here. But it could be anywhere in between f of a and f of b. Okay. What the intermediate value theorem states is that there has to be some spot on the x-axis, which they're calling c, such that the function at c is equal to k. Okay. So in other words, k seems to hit right here. So that means that our c is right there. So k is actually the same thing as f of c. Okay, in other words, let, let's put this in English. Okay, there is no way that we can get from this vertical value to that vertical value with a continuous function without hitting every single y value in between. Okay. I cannot get from here to there without hitting every y value in between because our function is continuous. Okay. Now it's possible that I could hit every y value in between more than once or more than twice. All right, here's my AB. Mark my function. I'm going to end down here. I'm going to start up there again. Okay. I could have a situation where I increase. It could be like a trig function. All right. We could have multiple cases where we hit. All right. Let's say that I'm interested in that value right there, that K. Well, I've hit it once twice, three, four, five times. Okay, the intermediate value theorem, I kind of wrote over it, but the intermediate value theorem says it happens at least once. Okay, there's no way to get from here to there without hitting all the vertical values in between at least once. This is in essence what our zero finder does on the graphing calculator. All right, and we, if the graphing calculator says, oh, you want me to find a zero, it says, well, wait a minute, if you want me to find a zero on this interval right here, and my function is positive here and negative there, well, I have to get to zero somewhere in between a positive and a negative, so I'm just going to keep narrowing my interval down further and further until I focus right in on the spot where the function happens to be zero. That's our intermediate value theorem. Again, notice the conditions. The function has to be continuous, and the starting value of the function must be different than the ending value of the function.